somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. And I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that day that I tried to be right on the wall question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to close those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian, or if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the Master taught, then my living will not be in vain. Yes, Jesus, I want to be on your right or your left side, not for any selfish reason. I want to be on your right or your left side, not in terms of some political kingdom or ambition. But I just want to be there in love and in justice and in truth and in commitment to others so that we can make of this old world a new world. Good evening. I'm Tehleen Muhaddeen, news reporter for WISC-TV in Madison. On behalf of the Madison-Dane County Martin Luther King Jr. Coalition, I am very pleased to welcome you to the 37th annual Madison-Dane County Observance honoring Dr. King's legacy for equality, justice, and peace. Thank you for joining us. Tonight's program is a culmination of events planned by the coalition to realize Dr. King's beloved community. Events that include today's youth's call to action and yesterday's ecumenical service co-hosted with First Unitarian Society, which can be viewed online. This past year has presented challenges within our community and throughout the nation. And as we've witnessed, the fight for civil rights is far from over. From voting rights to health care access to economic stability, as members of this community and state, we must work individually and collectively to ensure that people in our society from all walks of life, especially those who are already marginalized, can execute their constitutional rights. We regret that we cannot be with you in person tonight. However, we must take measures to protect public health, especially given the ways that, that this pandemic has disproportionately affected communities of color and low-income communities. We have an outstanding program planned tonight that will include a recognition of the 2022 Madison and Dane County Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Awardees by the Mayor, County Executive, and Chair of the Awards Commission, musical selections from the MLK Community Choir, a call to action, and of course, the highlight of our program, a speech from Ilyasha Shabazz, daughter of Malcolm X and Betty Shabazz, and a civil rights leader in her own right. Tonight, we recognize the importance of maintaining the course set for us by Dr. King and form a foundation of strength, love, and action. Your individual, your virtual attendance here tonight, 
Your volunteerism and your donations support this forward movement to a more equitable and just future. Now, please join us as we sing the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Good evening, my name is Reverend Dr. Marcus Allen and I'm the pastor here at Mount Zion Baptist Church and to give us honor and a privilege to be able to host this wonderful service in honor of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. We know that he was a jump, drum major for justice, but he also was a Baptist preacher. And so it gives us honor as a 110 year old Baptist church to host this service on tonight. And we wanna just say thank you to the King Coalition uh, for uh, being able to do this program tonight, let us pray. God of grace and mercy and peace, we tell you thank you. You've been so good, so kind, and so merciful just to allow us to see another day. A day we've never seen before and a day we shall never see again. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this privilege. We pray now for this service that you will bless the choir as they sing. Uh, bless all of the presenters bless the awardees, and just bless this service as a whole. Thank you for Dr. King, a man that's of passion and love, 
a man that gave so much for the sacrifice of all of us that we may be able to experience some of the freedoms and the rights of this nation. We pray now, God, that everything he fought for will not die, and we pray that his dream will continue to live on. So we pray for voting rights now, God, that they will pass, even today. We pray for health care for all, God. We pray that people will be able to experience life. We pray for the least, the lost, the left out, the left behind, that you would be with them, God. We pray for strength for the weak and healing for the sick. We pray for this nation's leadership. We pray for our administration at the city and county and state level, God. We pray, God, that we will experience uh, freedoms, God, and we pray against racism and hatred and yes, white supremacy, God. We pray against that, and we ask in your name that we will all be able to stand together and walk together as Dr. King so often stated that we would be one people, and that comes with love. So allow us to love each other and walk together. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. to pray for all the brothers under thine hand pray for all the sisters that's doing the best she can let us pray that tomorrow there'll be a better day to come yeah 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 we've got to put our forces together sing a song so loud so fair let the birds in the trees hum along with me sweet, sweet let it thunder, let it lightning, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, because we're going to sing glory, hallelujah, for the whole wide world can hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your hands together. Put your hands together now. Put your hands together. Yeah, yeah. Put your hands together. Come on. And let us pray. We got to pray for all the people who sleeping on the streets. Let us pray for all the people who don't have enough to eat. Let us pray that tomorrow there'll be a better day to come. Whoa! We got to put our voices together. Sing a song so loud, so clear. Let the birds in the trees hum along with me. Sweet, Sweet harmony. Oh! Because we're gonna sing hallelujah, 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 so the whole wide world can hear. Yeah, come on. Put your hands together. Put your hands together now. Put your hands together. Come on. Put your hands together. Yeah, yeah. And let us pray. Oh, cause we. Put your hands together. 
Michael is the president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County, transforming the organization from a local children's charity to a change agent for children and families while driving his high standards of excellence and financial transparency, Communi community engagement and governance, all with the goal of making a significant measurable impact in the lives of children and their families. Recently, he was successful in lobbying the state of Wisconsin to erect a statue of Val Phillips, who will become the first black woman in the United States to have a singular statue at a state capitol. He also raised more than $15 million last year for a new regional workforce center while raising $7 million in operating dollars to support thousands of school age and college students during the pandemic. Johnson also raised funds to support small businesses while at the same time gifting cars to families in need, helping families with mortgage down payments and providing mentoring and support to grassroots and local businesses and nonprofit organizations. Johnson recently received the Boys and Girls Club of America Heart and Soul Award, which is the highest honor among club executives. He was named Man of the Year by Madison 365 and was named 2022 Executive of the Year by In Business Magazine. Michael earned a BA in Business Education from Chicago State University and an MBA from the University of Phoenix. He also holds a cert certification in Fundraising Management from the Center of Philanthropy at Indiana University a certificate in, resource, in human resource management from Cornell University, an advanced leadership certificate from the University of Michigan, Ross School of Business, and a certificate in nonprofit strategic management from Harvard Business School. I just want to say um, thank you to um, the committee uh, that selected, you know, myself, Will Green, uh, and Vanessa, uh, what an honor uh, to receive the Martin Luther King uh, Humanitarian Award. I just want to say on behalf of um, our kids at Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, our staff, uh, our board of directors, our volunteers, our donors, um, they uh, helped us do so much work this year. And I'm just so honored to be uh, in this class this year and to receive an award um, like this is uh, something that I would cherish for the rest uh, of my life. When I think about the work of uh, Dr. King and to have uh, my name associated um, with somebody like him, it's just very, very um, special. And I also wanna thank uh, Lauren Bach, uh, who I believe nominated me uh, for this award. Um, thank you so much and thank you uh, to the community. Uh, for all that you do to help us be of service to other people in our community. It is my honor to present the 2022 Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award to Will Green. Will has been a prominent presence throughout Madison and Dane County for many years. He is the founder and executive director of Mentoring Positives Incorporated. Created in 2004, Mentoring Positives is a referral-based mentoring program focused on the Darbo Worthington Park neighborhood that provides a supportive environment for youth through sports, urban agriculture, and youth entrepreneurship. Will has been a positive influence in the Darbo neighborhood by connecting to young people and their families with his idea that the hook is the key. Teaching basketball and other sports and engaging the community in doing good work. In areas of Madison that have a history of violence, Will has helped bring the community together in meaningful ways, including with the Darbo Peace Walk that he started, which brings together people from different backgrounds to better understand one another while walking through the neighborhood. Will has big plans for Darbo and has brought together an impressive group of people with a vision for increasing the services and resources available in the neighborhood. Will is also the varsity girls basketball coach at Madison La Follette High School, where he continues to show his positive influence with the girls he works with. And as if that wasn't enough, 
Will was also a licensed Dane County foster parent for almost seven years and greatly impacted the teenage boys he fostered. Will shows his devotion to our community by being a consummate positive role model to many youth of color. His passion for engaging and connecting with some of our most distressed youth is a skill that many do not possess. And many of the youth with whom he works do not have a father figure present in their lives, so Will effortlessly steps in to guide as needed. Will Green is a visionary who puts in the work every day to achieve his vision. He's also a kind and caring individual who I've been privileged to interact with for many years. He is truly deserving of this award. Congratulations, Will, and thank you for your vision, your hard work, and your commitment to the Madison community. Thank you to those who nominated me and to the city and county for this amazing honor to be chosen as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award recipient. I want to thank my wife, Becky Green, and my two daughters, Malia and Skyler, for allowing me to sacrifice so much of our family time to serve others. I want to say rest in peace to my mom, Muriel Pipkins, who I lost to breast cancer when she was only 46 years old. Her loss inspired me to create Mentoring Positives, a youth mentoring program in the Madison community. Receiving this award today has made me reflect on how many youth and families I have touched through, the, through our mentoring program 18 year existence. I am humbled to still be in touch with so many of the youth who have grown up to be successful adults. A humanitarian is someone always thinking about the welfare of others MLK's work was just that, and I have admired his work throughout my life. I am blessed to be a mentor and a coach to many of our youth. I hope to inspire them to be whoever they want to be. I believe MLK was a great leader because he was not afraid to use love as an ingredient of, of his work. Mentoring Positives has been planting the seeds of love to our youth, specifically in the Darbo neighborhood since 2004. I want to wrap this up by saying thank you to all the individuals, businesses, organizations, friends, and families that have supported me in our work. And I will end with a quote from the great MLK that I am sure that many of you are familiar with. Um, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Thank you. Good evening, and thank you so much for being here tonight to join us in honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the individuals who are carrying on that legacy right here in our community. I'm really honored tonight to be able to introduce and recognize Vanessa McDowell. Uh, Vanessa is well known to many people throughout our community. Uh, folks know her as the CEO of YWCA Madison. Um, Vanessa was the first black woman CEO of the YWCA Madison in their 112 year history. And we're so honored and fortunate to have her here doing her work in support of women and social justice and families throughout our community. Vanessa was born right here in Madison, attend, attended college at UW Madison and earned her sociology degree here. And she's been doing great work ever since. She's a proud member of Mount Zion Church, where she's very active um, in the community and in the church's work. She's also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. And despite the fact that we're virtual tonight, I think I can hear her sore sisters in red cheering as we speak. Um, Vanessa does so much great work and has such an incredible future in front of her and has been recognized by folks throughout this state, um, including having appointments from Governor Evers, and others to do the good work that she does. Um, and finally, speaking as a former musician, I must add, Vanessa is also a talented bass player, as well as a popular local DJ, DJ Ace, who brings people together across our community through music, the healing power of which, can, which cannot be underestimated, especially today. So Vanessa, congratulations. Thank you for making our community a better place. We appreciate you, and it's an honor to recognize you tonight. Thank you.
Good evening. Wow, to God be the glory. I am so honored to receive the City County Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award this evening. I have so many people to thank, um, just all of the people that have uh, really instilled um, so much into my life. Um, thank you to the city and the county for this award. Thank you to the YWCA board uh, for the nomination. And I wanna give a special shout out to my YWCA Madison family, uh, staff, uh, call them the dream team, uh, for just your continued support as well. I wanna shout out my Mount Zion family as I've learned what leadership is uh, through being thrown into leadership as a child uh, growing up in this church. And so really uh, wanna thank them for their continued support. Also, I wanna thank the Madison Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, uh, in which I'm a member, and all of you are all's continued support as my sororers and sisters. I also uh, want to thank uh, my mentors, uh, who are my parents. Uh, they have continuously showed me what uh, trailblazing looks like, what leadership looks like, uh, what wisdom looks like, and I just hope that I continue to uh, be half of who they are uh, as I continue to live my life and continue to make them proud. As I considered uh, this award and getting this award, I was immediately reminded of growing up as a kid, uh, being a part of this, this program. Unfortunately, COVID has not allowed us to be together, but always being a part of the MLK choir under the leadership of Leota Stanley uh, and being in the choir or playing the bass. And so uh, always watched uh, just amazing leaders get these awards. And I would uh, just be like so inspired, like, wow, look at all the work that they're doing. And to be standing here today receiving this award is humbling to say the least uh, for me. So thank you for this award again. And I would just leave you with something that I try to live by um, as I serve the community and as I live my life. And it's a quote from Maya Angelou. And it says, I've learned that people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Thank you.
It is a great pleasure and honor to have Ms. Ilyasa Shabazz as the keynote speaker for the 37th Annual City of Madison Dane County Observance of the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday. Ms. Shabazz, we thank you for accepting our, don our invitation. Ms. Shabazz is an award-winning author, educator, and producer. She has authored five historical novels and has served as project advisor for the PBS award-winning documentary, Prince Among Slaves. She's the co-chairperson for the Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz Memorial and Education Center. Ms. Shabazz has furthered her com community impact with the City University of New York's Office of Academic Affairs, where she created curriculums to encourage higher education for underserved inner city youth without a high school diploma. She has also worked with the Office of the Mayor in Mount Vernon, where she founded a program that provided young people with insight on social justice, encouraging their personal empowerment. Ms. Shabazz is an active leader and volunteer in her community and a member of countless committees, commissions, and boards. She currently works as an adjunct professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York City, where she teaches perspectives on justice in the Africana world. As president and founder of Ilyasa Shabazz Enterprises, she also produces a variety of forums dedicated to power, possibility, and sovereignty. Grounded in her commitment to her parents, she's dedicated herself to institution building and intergenerational leadership. Intergenerational leadership development with the tenets of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Ilyasa Shabazz. Hello, Madison, Wisconsin. I'm honored to be with you today as we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Coalition of Madison and Dane County. It was the early 1920s in the state of Wisconsin that Malcolm's young father, Reverend Earl Little, as president of the International Industrial Club of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, successfully filed an appeal to then President Coolidge for the release of Marcus Garvey. And it's because of our connection to Wisconsin that your state has always held a special place in my family's heart. We give praise to the Almighty. We give praise to our ancestors, particularly the refined, industrious, indigenous men and women of African ancestry. We give praise to the countless men and women who endured both physical and psychological traumas, who endured the largest forced migration of a people in the history of mankind, and yet we still stand and we prosper. We are strong, we are vigilant, and we are faithful. And so we thank you, God, the Almighty, and we thank you, ancestors, for allowing all of us to be here this evening with your rich blood in our veins together. As a nation, we're enduring great challenges. We come together to create hope as we meander through a double pandemic. One began in 2019 with the coronavirus and the other in 1492 with Spanish ships invading Haiti, beginning the captivity of black and brown indigenous people on their own land, which was exacerbated in 1619 when black indigenous Africans were captured and trafficked to the Americas under inhumane treatment. Indeed, today in 2022, we are witnessing the surreal symptoms and side effects of generational and psychological trauma, miseducation, resulting in the senseless loss and incarceration of so many human lives. We're haunted by the heinous murders of George Floyd, Ahmed Aubrey, Eric Garner, Sandra Bland. We're haunted by the heinous murders of Tamir Rice, 
Elijah Brown, Breonna Taylor, Emmett Till, and so many countless, nameless, and faceless others. Yet, much like Dr. King and my father, Malcolm X, I will not look at this racial pandemic with despair. Each had a hope that we must manifest, a hope in the capacities of a people that brought my father to Mississippi in 1964, inspiring young students to be critical thinkers and understand the necessity to think for themselves. Indeed, even in our most challenging moments, we must find, create, and become that hope in which our society truly works for everyone. It means challenging a state with the highest incarceration rate of young black and brown men where child poverty for black and browns is four times that of child poverty for whites. Wisconsin, we must seize that hope and propose legislation that combats these harsh realities. My father spent much of his young life combating these issues of Jim Crow, of brutal, unlawful injustice. Malcolm was only in his 20s when the world discovered him, and he was 39 when he was assassinated. Such a young man. He was committed to seeking solutions to the human condition that sought to annihilate its own brother and sister. In April of 1957, Malcolm sought to expose the world to the corruption and hypocrisy of police forces across America. While my father was the national spokesperson and minister of Harlem's mosque number seven, one of its members was brutally beaten. This young man's name was Hinton Johnson. And Johnson yelled out at officers as he saw them viciously beating a young man. He called out to the officers to stop beating the young man, exclaiming, you're not in Alabama, this is New York. The officers did not take kindly to Mr. Johnson's expression of free speech, so they turned their attention away from the young victim and on to Mr. Johnson. They began beating this young man with police clubs so violently that he had permanent damage to his brain from men who were paid by the people to protect and serve the people. As many of us saw in Spike Lee's film, Malcolm X, my father called upon the members of the mosque to strategically mobilize and protest of this incident. Each member was responsible for calling two members so that young people, it was a strategic domino effect. Much like when you organize a skillful protest following the murder of George Floyd, skillful and organized. Young people work together based on a common goal. And heeding this call, hundreds rushed to Johnson's aid. Under my father's leadership together, they organized outside the police station where Johnson was being held. They demanded that their brother be released from jail and be given prompt and thorough medical attention as do any human being. And although the protesters' demands were initially ignored, they did not relent and they did not leave until the appropriate treatment for their fellow brother was administered. They did not quit until they accomplished their identified goal, ladies and gentlemen. And this spirit of activism has much to teach us today. The words of the late Congressman John Lewis ought to haunt us as we still continue to face injustice. Amid the civil rights struggle, John Lewis asked two questions. If not us, who? If not now, when? 
in a time where so many in our community are struggling to find an encouraging voice and a helping hand, we must ask, if not us, who? When the Senate is playing politics, as we need a voting rights bill passed, as my father said in 1964, if not now, when? As deafening silence of the powers that be continue to meet the tragedies of police brutality, and we are called to speak out, we must ask, if not us, who? In a time where the courts are packed with judges who sentence our young children as adults, and we are waiting for tides of justice to turn, we must ask, if not now, when? In a country where critical race theory is slowly being outlawed, as students need someone to provide the truth about history, the truth about all and not a select few of the founders of this land of milk and honey, and the truth about how this great land was cultivated by our ancestors so that every single American today has the opportunity to call the United States of America their home, we must ask, if not us, then who? As inequality still stands in the way of progress and we gather to fight for justice, we must ask, if not now, when? As Dr. King's words still ring true, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. We must work with the caveat that the arc of the moral universe does not bend on its own. We must work together, pray together, walk together, stand together, and always refuse injustice together. It is the only way. We must ask God to show us how to support one another and lead us to find our way forward together. Only together can we begin to heal the wounds that an oppressive system has caused within our communities. My father said, if you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that the blow made. And while these past years have brought some awareness to the wounds and our collective humanity, we must do more to ensure black, brown and indigenous Americans are no longer murdered by police. We need to do more to critique, dismantle and reform the unjust separate sets of rules under which America operates. America's truth and its history must be taught to our students in every school and at every level. This is just part of our path forward. Educational textbooks that teach every American child that black history is American history and that American history is also Hispanic history, Native American history, and Asian history. There's no American history unless each and every voice is heard on the pages of those textbooks. This is the beauty of our America. If the voluminous pogroms against the Aboriginal Americans, slavery, Jim Crow, the 1920s massacre of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and in Rosewood, Florida, were taught in high school history classes along with the 1930s European Jewish Holocaust and the 1940s internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, then more citizens would understand the need for the federal government to appoint a committee to explore financial remuneration and the psychosis of those who have been systematically targeted for extinction by the bigotry of his fellow man. 
If our young students learned in world history classes that Africa is the cradle of the most advanced thriving civilizations ever to exist in humankind, hence the impressive kingdoms of Benin, Ghana, Mali, Egypt, to the same degree they learn about ancient Greece and Rome, we might better appreciate the beauty and magnificence of civilizations in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. So how do we as individuals react to this moment? What do we do to help bring about more egalitarian policy and fully educate Americans as a start? We as a people must be self-reflective, acknowledge truth, and be accountable for the narrative that history records. What my father, Dr. King, Fannie Lou Hamer, Ida B. Wells, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, and countless other African American activists seeking relief from this knife wedged in our backs is this. Even if you were not the callous officers who knelt on George Floyd's neck, his back, and his lungs, even if you were not a violent insurrectionist charging the Capitol, you likely have been one of the three officers who stood by as Mr. Floyd called out to his deceased mother grasping for his last breath. Or you've been one of the officers who stood by at the Capitol and did nothing. We all at one time or another have watched and allowed injustice in the world around us. But education is the key to being woke to those very injustices. My mother, Dr. Betty Shabazz taught me this path. She believed education is the most powerful tool to combat the injustice of systemic American racism. I follow in her footsteps as an educator. My father provided the greatest critique of America and he simply insisted that his country live up to its promise of liberty and justice for all. Both of my parents' lessons about education and activism are more relevant than ever. We must continue to exert as much pressure as possible to change a system whose ingrained divisive phobias are killing us. My prayer and hope is that this moment, these most challenging, pressing years will produce present and future generations of problem solvers like Dr. King, focusing on a holistic approach to human rights. This must be a transformative collective movement waged on multiple fronts, short and long-term, where each of us has an investment and where each of us must become an agent for change. As a nation, we witness political unrest and uncertainty, a deep, constant grief, and yet it has been a moment ripe for regenerative growth and possibility, which has propelled national discourse around the movement for Black lives, the need for systemic change in a more egalitarian America. Central to this discourse is the strength of community-led institutions that reflect our collective visions for what freedom really looks like and what accountability, democracy, and self-determination really are. Now more than ever is the time to commit to the work of radical institution building. Many progressive organizations, including the movement for Black Lives, Dream Defenders, the King Center, the Shabazz Center have heeded the call for structural systemic change, innovative institution building and spirit driven activism, but we need more. There's so much opportunity right now to finally bring about foundational change. We can achieve 
real change, justice, and love, would we accept the fact that we must act together? It is our responsibility as the leaders in our households and communities to organize, strategize, and build community networks, gaining the support that we need from one another, standing up for those who cannot stand for themselves, and making our voices heard however and whenever possible. We cannot continue to be bamboozled, thinking only about self. We must abandon the false notion that you can pull yourself up by your own individual bootstraps. Look around you, it does not work and it never has. We must forget our differences and unite toward a common goal. We must take the baton my father said that it would be this generation of young people who would recognize that those in power have misused it and demand change, willing to do the necessary work themselves. We must be unified in our shared humanity, in our battle against the injustice acts of police brutality. Our goal must be shared. Our plans must be strategic and our people must be disciplined and selfless. We must constantly push ourselves toward being more loving to one another and every part of our community. As the activist Fannie Lou, Fannie Lou, Hammer, Fannie Lou Hamer said, we are in this bag together, educated and uneducated. We are in this bag together rich and poor, we are in this bag together. Women and men, we are in this bag together. When we can understand that our collective action means more than our individual action, then we can dream new dreams together. We will create a world that makes our communities resonate with the words of the African proverb, if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you wanna go far, go together. And once we have found that we can only win together, then we will know that God is with us as we struggle, that God is with us as we work, that God is with us in both our triumphs and tragedies. Most importantly, God is with us as we attempt to play the great jazz of life in the tone of justice and love marinated in the blue note of the past despair and ever fighting against the cafoni of evil and hate. And when we begin to bear witness, we will have the comfort and challenge of knowing that each of us are God's creation. Thank you, I love you, and God bless you. Hani chata hai pi, Aaron Birdbear ga hinigaide, ho chunk language for, I'm nice, it's nice to be here, my name is Aaron Birdbear. As is good practice to learn about and acknowledge the indigenous nation upon whose ancestral land we are located, in our case, the ho chunk nation, the people of the sacred voice. I am currently serving as the inaugural tribal relations director at the University of Wisconsin-Madison here in Dejo, or Four Lakes. My ancestors are from three indigenous societies, the Mandan, the Hidatsa, and the Diné, or Navajo, as the Spanish called us. In 2020, the 24th Navajo Nation Council honored the memory and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by commending Dr. King for remembering the plight of Native Americans and the genocide perpetrated against indigenous peoples on this land by the founders of this country, noting Dr. King's remarks. Our nation was born in genocide when it embraced the doctrine that the original Americans, the Indian, was an inferior race. Even before there were large numbers of Negroes on our shores, the scar of racial hatred had already disfigured colonial society. 
From the 16th century forward, blood flowed in battles of racial supremacy. We are perhaps the only nation which tried as a matter of national policy to wipe out its indigenous population. Moreover, we elevated that tragic experience into a noble crusade. Indeed, even today, we have not permitted ourselves to reject or to feel remorse for this shameful episode. Our literature, our films, our drama, our folklore, all exalt it. I am pleased to participate in tonight's coalition program by sharing the litany of rededication. The litany was written by the Reverend Martin Klinger, former senior pastor of First Baptist Church, based on key words and principles of Dr. King. Hopefully, this evening, the words will resonate with you and that we will all pledge to rededicate ourselves toward working towards creating a more just and equitable society. We pledge ourselves to the American promise that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We pledge to live in mutual cooperation with all our brothers and sisters. We will weave our lives together into a single garment of destiny. We will avoid the use of violence within our world, our nation, our country, our city, our neighborhood, our home, and our family. We will harbor no hatred within our hearts. We will seek peaceful solutions in every conflict, and we will preserve and protect the, dig the dignity and worth of every person. We will not cooperate with evil. Neither will we be patient with injustice. Now is the time for us to do what is right. We will treat every person as a being of infinite value and intrinsic worth. We will never use another soul as a means to our own advancement. We will keep hope alive in our hearts. We believe that the universe is on the side of justice. We believe that truth is stronger than evil. We believe that this is no time for our apathy, silence, or complacency. We must work unceasingly to lift this nation that we love to a higher destiny. This is a time for our vigorous and positive action. So we pledge to lift high the banner of peace, justice, reconciliation, and beloved community in this day and in this community. Good evening, muy buenas noches. My name is Margarita Avila and I am the Director of Workforce Development at the Latino Academy of Workforce Development. And I am pleased to be part of tonight's program by extending a call to action. As we reflect on the messages shared tonight, the King's Coalition asks you to ponder how you can act to reflect, reflect positive changes in our community. We ask, what are the ways in which you can advance the movement for civil and human rights in the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King and the many others who have followed him devoting their lives to creating change? In Dr. Martin Luther King's words, opportunities to engage in positive actions are never lost, but simply deferred to another day. We are here to ask, what would you do today, tomorrow, every day? When we think of legacy, many, th many things come to mind. Children, community, the impact we might leave on the world. At the Latino Academy of Workforce Development, we recognize the disparities in housing, education, and employment, among other key factors that create inequities in a person's financial and health and overall well-being. The Latino Academy of Workforce Development's mission is to provide growth and enrichment opportunities in the areas of employment, education, and well-being to reflect the evolving needs, strengths, and diversity of the communities we serve. We provide cultural competence, bilingual adult education, and job training programming to vitalize our local economy and connect our participants with meaningful careers that contribute back to Dane County's community. At the Latino Academy, our participants find a place to thrive, where academics, community, culture, 
and diversity all come together and empower them to be the best version of themselves. We are committed to ensure everyone has a dignified seat at the decision-making table. Everyone's voices matter. One of the most important things for anyone to be seen and to be heard and to be validated, to be recognized, and affirm our humanity. We must all stand for what it is right. In our homes, schools, workplaces, and communities. We all have a role to play in changing our world for the better. Together, we can build up on Dr. Luther King's legacy to his, his vision, a reality for all. We encourage you to explore volunteer opportunities through the coalition's outgoing partners, Wisconsin Network for Peace, Justice and Sustainability, WNPG.org, and United Way of Dane County at volunteeryourtime.org. We invite you to also make a financial contribution. Your gift will help fund the King's Coalition yearly observance and activities. We will also direct donations to Little John's, which is making a significant contribution in this community to address hunger and food insecurity in Dane County and to Dane County. Wisconsin Waters ID Coalition, which focuses on water registration and understands how critical it is for people to have access to vote so that they can participate in this democracy and exercise their constitutional rights. Donate to mlkcoalition.org or text to MLK2022 to 33777. You can find all of these links on the King's Coalition Facebook page. Thank you in advance for your generosity, kindness, and action. To all our participants, thank you for making this such an inspiring and impactful evening. From the beautiful music to the powerful words from our speaker, Ms. Shabazz, and the honorees. The litany of rededication and the call to action challenge us to use our voices and work to continue Dr. King's legacy of service, equality, justice, and peace. Dr. King's message is not about one day nor one weekend. It's about building and strengthening bridges renewing and reinforcing the commitment that we've made tonight to each other and our community each and every day. As Dr. King proclaimed, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. And now that this evening's program is coming to an end, we thank you for allowing us to share our holiday celebration with you. Please be safe and take care of each other. Finally, in keeping with tradition, prepared and inspired to serve, we will close the program in song, led by the MLK Community Choir and the singing of We Shall Overcome. Mm -hmm. 